And my passion now is development with new ideas, finding new ways of doing things and incorporating that with nature and if we can produce something to the quality that we want then that's what I'm aiming for all the time and that's the enjoyment that I get. So I'm Peter Alexander and I'm the manager of the Christmas tree farm now for Thompson's. We're located on the Isle of Wight and we're standing uh, on a farm about 120 acres of Christmas trees. I was lucky to have grown up with a relation that had a farm. I spent most of my summer holidays and weekend on the farm and from then sort of fell into horticulture. I'm in the amenity, worked in forestry, landscaping, managed nurseries as well as garden centres and ending up here on the Christmas trees farm. The Christmas tree farm was actually acquired by Mr Thompson 20 years ago. And we've got a garden centre chain and we realised that we needed to uh, supply our own Christmas trees for, uh, for our own sales at our garden centres. So we decided that we would start growing Christmas trees. It started out as a bit of a hobby for Mr Thompson. Now we're selling 8,000 trees, planting 9,000 trees and uh, keeping uh, extremely busy. Within the 120 acres of ground, there's probably about five or six percent which we've set aside for nature, whether it be a reed bed, planting with other trees. Within those areas and around the farm, we've got bird boxes and we've got bat boxes. It was probably 10 years ago, we actually had two lots of bees come onto the farm. From then on, it actually changed my thoughts in how we do things. So I've gradually evolved and changed things so that we can try and grow Christmas trees in a way that is suitable for nature as well, so we can work alongside. With our cut trees, the way that we're growing them on behalf of uh, the environment and for nature, we do believe that we're doing the right thing and, and a Christmas tree that's growing in the landscape for, for 10 years is encouraging a, a lot of nature the trees do take in carbon. They are constantly giving out oxygen. To actually cut it and use it for four weeks, although it sounds bad, probably isn't as bad as it sounds. When we're harvesting, we obviously cut the trees off, but we do uh, leave the roots in the ground. and We don't plough or turn over the soil. And the growing technique that we actually do on this farm is actually quite ahead of its time and I do believe that a lot of growers will start to grow this way. A good Christmas tree, and I've always said, is in the eye of the beholder. But as a grower, I'm always looking at the bad points on the tree to try and then make better for the future. And one of those is not to have the leader too tall. Plenty of branches at the top. When you're decorating and dressing the tree and hanging your baubles, then you obviously need those branches to be nicely spaced for that task working out in an environment like this and what an office. I think a lot of people would pay to work in an environment like this and I have the pleasure of working outside, fresh air, with nature and I must admit the staff that I got are brilliant. The enjoyable part is probably at Christmas and the sales and actually seeing young families and children excited with Christmas. Um, and you see all those lovely smiles and that's, that's quite an enjoyment, spending years, weeks growing them and then finally having them ready for people to enjoy them for a few weeks for Christmas. In the past I've seen mum and dads bringing their children in and those children have now grown and have got their own children and it's a tradition for them to come back each year and uh, to buy a, a real Christmas tree. After Christmas and all year round, I can be out shopping in the supermarket. You can see mum and dad uh, pointing to me and say uh, to their little one that there's, there's the Christmas tree man, that's where we get our Christmas tree from. I'm the Christmas tree man. <laughs>